Would I recommend Beto's Leatherworks for re-sewing purposes? The answer to that question and more in this video. I remember when he called me and I heard on the phone, Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. And I said, wow, you sound exactly the same on the phone as you do on your YouTube channel. We both laughed about it and he said he actually gets that a lot. So to start off with, I want to say that I did make a previous video where I briefly showed the Allen Edmonds Park Avenues in brown alligator leather that I purchased in 2019. But I wasn't satisfied with it because I didn't spend a lot of time on the video because it was rushed. So I felt it really didn't do the shoes justice. I also had a far inferior camera at the time. Fast forward to May 2020, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about the shoes and why I chose Steve to resole them. When I first heard about these shoes, I was even amazed that Alan Edmonds had a pair of these in their warehouse that were sitting there for 16 years. This pair was made in 2002, and the customer had ordered them with the VIP rubber sole in black. The soles gave the shoes a weird squishy feeling when walking, but also I felt it didn't look right with the shoes. It just looked really inappropriate to my eyes. Furthermore, there was a strong impression in the shoes as the customer had worn them on carpet for a few days before deciding to return them. I'm actually surprised Alan Edmonds accepted this as a return. So what I told Steve was that I wanted him to make the soles look as close as possible to the brown Bartlett soles that you see here. And I asked him if there was any way we could remove the previous impression on the insole because obviously I wanted to create my own impression in the shoes. He said this was no problem and it took about six weeks to complete the job after he received the shoes. I was so impressed with the shoes when they arrived back. He did everything I wanted him to do. He removed the impression. He created a light brown leather heel stack. He used a JR sole. He added wheeling or what he calls fudging. He even cut the little edge at the heels like Alan Edmonds does. He also added this little wedge that you'll find on Alden shoes. Comparing these to the Alden 9501 that I have, they are remarkably similar. Just see for yourself in these pictures how close they look. This is Alden level quality at the least. He also hid the stitching on the bottom of the soles, which is something I didn't ask for, but of course I appreciate it as this is only something that you will see on the very high-end shoes such as Crockett and Jones. The only thing Steve asked me if he could do was to add some kind of gaiter design on the bottom of the sole, to which I said, sure, go for it. I have no issue with him adding his own signature on the shoes. Now about the sole, the support is fantastic, even though there is not a steel shank in the shoes. The stacked leather heel base that he created feels like the most supportive heel of any shoe in my entire collection, even more so than the Alden pairs. But keep in mind that with this better quality support in the heel, it does kind of hit the pavement a little bit more hard when walking. The only minor thing that I would like to change if I could is that the gold lettering on the bottom, I think it would look better if it were in silver. I'm also curious if silver nails could be used on the bottom, but I have read online that brass nails are the standard because they wear softer on hard surfaces such as wood. So I'm not sure if it's even a good idea to put silver nails in a heel base, but someone please tell me in the comments if you know, because I would like to learn. As a request from Steve, I'm not gonna list the total price for this, he really went above and beyond what I paid and I got a great deal on this service that he provided. Now you might be thinking that gator leather would feel stiff and that's what I originally thought, but in reality it's very much the opposite. They're very soft, they flex very easily. I spoke with a friend of mine recently who lives in Orange County and he owns a ton of Allen Edmonds shoes. I asked him about gator leather because he owned a pair and he told me that his pair actually tore. I was not surprised to hear this because this leather does have a kind of delicate quality to it and I could imagine that if you snagged it on something it could easily rip. That's another reason why I don't wear these out very often and I'm always careful when I do. Would I want to purchase another pair of alligator shoes? Probably not. I think one is enough and I don't really wear these enough to justify another pair.
But another reason is that alligator leather is really expensive. And the only reason I was able to afford these is because they were selling them at a fraction of what the original price was. To sum this all up, Steve and his team exceeded my expectations. So I decided to use him again on a much simpler resoling job with my Allen Edmonds Rothsay boots in olive. The Rothsay was one of those limited run models that came out sometime around 2014, I believe. It was not wildly popular. I was looking for something that I could wear on rainy days and saw these as sort of a poor man's indie boot. I also liked the fact that they were olive and I liked the red laces because they were very unusual. These were on clearance for a long time when I picked them up in 2016, so I didn't pay very much for them. The Rothsay, like the Higgins Mill boot, is made on the 1757 last, which is fairly snug in the heel, has about average length overall, and somewhat wide in the toe area. It reminds me a lot of Alden's Berry Last, except that the berry fits one half size larger in the same size. Some of you may be asking, how does the fit compare to the Higgins Mill boot in the same size? Well, the Rothsay in my experience is definitely more narrow, but it remains within the true to size range. I would recommend going up a half size in the Rothsay if you want to wear it with thicker socks, which unfortunately I cannot with this pair. However, your mileage may vary, of course, because everybody's feet are different. Just by going off the heel to ball fit, you can see it lines up perfectly with my feet. The Rothsay, like the Higgins, comes with a very comfortable flat pour-on insole. The major disappointment with the Rothsay has to do with the Vibram Christy sole that they put on this thing. I will never order another shoe with the Christy sole again because it's horrible for support, at least for me. My legs were always aching every time I'd go out and wear these. I knew I had to do something to address this problem because if I was ever going to wear these again frequently, I had to do something about the sole. I didn't want to send them to Allen Edmonds because these had only been worn about 10 times and I wanted a cobbler to reuse the previous holes in the upper and the welt. I knew Steve could do a red day-night sole, just like AE, and I also knew that he could include a steel shank in the shoes for better support. The shoes were very comfortable when I received them, but they needed much more support and I knew Steve could handle all these issues. Steve was able to use the same reverse welt and the holes that were in the upper, which keeps the shoes in a like new condition without putting additional wear and tear on the upper. I can share the total cost, which came out to about $200 before shipping, which was actually more than what the shoes cost when they were brand new. I could have had Allen Edmonds do this for about $160, the only thing that they could not have done would have been the steel shank, but I felt it was worth it to pay a little bit extra and have Steve take care of this project because it would put less wear and tear on the uppers. So how did they turn out? Well, it's like a night and day difference in terms of support. I can finally wear these out and not have to worry about my legs hurting. And the combination of the pour on insole and the steel shank with the red day night is ideal for a person like myself. Some people might be asking, is it as supportive as the Higgins? Not quite. For some reason, the Higgins still feels a little more supportive, and that might be because there's a thicker leather midsole in the shoes, but I'm not sure if that's the reason. Is there anything I would change? Just one minor thing that I didn't even think to mention to Steve. I should have requested him to put a beige color stitching on the welt, as I think that would look great with this color of shoe, just like you see with the olive strand mock. However, this was not his fault because I didn't mention it. But to be honest, it still looks fine with the dark brown stitching. Not a big deal. One funny thing to point out is that he forgot to cut one of the heel stacks at the corner like AE does. So I ended up with one AE and one Alden boot. Steve? If you're watching this, just laugh it off. It's not a big deal. However, with higher quality commands a higher price. Would I personally use Steve's services for every resole? Probably not, simply because not all my shoes deserve this top level service. For example, I wouldn't send him this pair of Allen Edmonds Malone shoes. Could you imagine sending those to him? 
However, he will continue to be one of my top choices for any of my special, rare, or irreplaceable shoes. I do want to test out some other cobblers in the future, but I certainly will use his services again at some point. I know I can count on him. I'm not here to argue that Steve is the only great leather repairman. There are several others out there that do really great work, and you can easily find out some information by searching on Google or YouTube or the Style Forum. However, just make sure that whoever you send your Allen Edmonds shoes to, make sure they really understand how to resole them properly. And what I mean is, for example, Allen Edmonds requires shorter nails in the heel stack than some other brands. If a less experienced cobbler puts nails in there that are too long, it could permanently damage the shoes. There are many professional cobblers out there that know how to properly resole Allen Edmonds shoes, and those are the ones you want to do your business with. So I think you can tell by now that yes, I highly recommend Steve and his team for resoling. In fact, I would give their services five stars out of five. I apologize that it's been so long since my last video, but the reason is because I was waiting for a piece of audio gear to arrive in the mail. And as you know, there's lots of delays going on with the mail, so it took a long time. Keep an eye out for my next review, where I'll be going over the Crockett and Jones Lanark shoe in dark brown calf. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching.